Hi, welcome to this tutorial where we'll be taking a look at modeling a very simple wooden barrel. For this tutorial, we will be using 3ds Max 2022. I currently have 3ds Max open and I have not modified the software in any way. Looking at our reference model, we are going to take some estimates of dimensions before we can begin. First, the height of this barrel appears to be about a meter. This means that from the bottom of the barrel to the top of the barrel, we are looking at 100 centimeters. The diameter along the top looks to be pretty close to be two thirds of that height. So I will do, be doing a 33 centimeter radius and a 100 unit height. Next, there are some metal bands that run along the barrel. These metal bands separate the barrel into different segments. Here I can see how many metal bands are needed. In this case, there are four internal metal bands and two metal bands along the top and bottom. Also, the barrel has some curvature, which is going to need to be adjusted as well. Let's begin by creating our cylinder. In 3ds Max, I will head to the command panel. I will go into the creation tab and find the standard primitives. Here, I will select cylinder and I will draw in the perspective viewport a footprint on the ground. Once I let go of my mouse, I can drag the height. Once I click again to establish the height, I will go into the little plus in the viewport and I will go to maximize viewport. This way we can see our barrel full screen. Next, I will get rid of the bounding box using shift J to remove the little white bars. And under the rendering tab, I will go down and find the edged faces. This allows me to see the wireframe denoting how our cylinder is constructed. Next, I will go into the parameters and I will adjust the parameters so that they match the dimensions that I established while looking at the image. First, the height will be set to 100 units. Next, the radius will be set to 33. This now somewhat matches the dimensions that we saw in the barrel. The next segments are about the construction of the barrel. First, the height segments indicates how many polygons start at the bottom and end at the top. The default in 3ds Max is five, and we have five polygons that run along its height. This is actually what we want. I have one edge for each of the metal bands in the image, and I'll be able to add the additional metal bands. The sides at 18 is also probably pretty good. We don't need to increase this or decrease this. Since I've completed editing all my parameters and I need to, in a more granular way, go and edit the barrel, I will right click on it and I will head down to the bottom of my context menu and select Edit Poly. Once this is done, the editable poly menu will appear in the command panel. This gives us access to all of the manipulation tools that we need to edit our barrel. The first thing we're going to need to do is we are going to need to create a curvature of the barrel. Since this wooden barrel is rounded in its center, we are going to need to manipulate the shape of the barrel. This is the largest detail on this mesh, and therefore it is the first detail we should be accomplishing. In 3ds Max, I will head into the drop down menu for modifiers and I will go and find the modifier called FFD sill. This is a free form deformer in the shape of a cylinder. When I click this, I will be treated to a wire mesh cage that surrounds my geometry. This is the FFD. In terms of the stack, I have the FFD above the edit poly. This acts almost as a layer system, and whatever is on top obscures whatever is on bottom. This means that the tools on the top obscure the tools on the bottom, so I no longer have access to my Edit Poly or uh, any of its tools. I now only have access to the FFD. I'm going to go and make some modifications to this in terms of the shape. The reason that I'm doing this is that when viewed from above, 
A six-sided cylinder for a cage is going to manipulate the barrel and alter its curvature. I would like to get something a little bit closer to round. So, inside of the FFD cell, where it says dimensions, I will hit the set number of points, and where it says sides, I will alter the number from six, the number of sides around our cage, to 18, which matches our barrel. When I do this, I now actually have an equal number of edges to what is contained in the barrel. Now this is not absolutely mandatory, but I find it helps maintain the cylindrical shape of our barrel a little bit more. Once this is done, we can begin adding curvature. To do this, I'm going to use the little triangle in the stack to open the FFD modifier. Here, we get access to the components of the FFD. The component we are interested in is called control points. And once selected, I can select the vertices of the cage and they can be moved. They in turn will manipulate the shape underneath. I will look at my barrel from the side and mark key select all of the vertices that are contained within the center two rings. This will allow me to move the middle of the barrel wherever I like. Since we want the barrel to be swollen along its core, I'm going to shift to the Scale tool, and I will scale along Y and X and drag it out. This will add curvature to the barrel in exactly the right area. Once completed, I need to return to be Edit Poly. To do this, I have two options. I can right-click on my mesh and convert it an editable polygon. If I do this, I lose the ability to manipulate the FFD. This will collapse our object back down to a polygonal mesh and the controls for the FFD are gone. Alternatively, some artists prefer to use an edit poly modifier. If I go into my modifier selection and I go and find the edit poly, this will add an edit poly modifier on top of the stack. With this modeling technique, we have the ability of returning to the FFD and manipulating it further, and then going back to the Edit Poly to make more granular changes. The method you choose doesn't matter, provided the barrel looks the way it's intended to look. The next thing I'm going to do is manipulate our edges so that they more closely resemble what we see on the barrel. I need to add an edge for the bottom and top metal rail and then split the four edges that I have in order to create the additional rails. To begin with, I'm going to go to edges and I will select one of the vertical edges along the top where I need to add the metal rail. I will use the ring button to continue that selection all the way around a barrel. With this done, I can go and find in the Edit Edges section, the Connect button. To its right, we will find the settings, and when I open this, the Connect Edges dialog will open. Here we have three options. The number of edges we create, pinching those edges together, and sliding those edges along their surface. The slide is what I'm interested in, and I'm going to use the slider on the side of the tool to move the edge more towards the top. When pleased, I will hit OK. I will return to the bottom of the barrel and repeat the process, selecting a vertical edge, hitting ring, hitting connect options, and then removing the negative so that instead of being at the top, our edge goes to the bottom. I will hit OK, and we now have our metal band for the top and for the bottom. Next, I will grab the next edge in. I will chamfer it to give it a little bit of a split. I will increase the amount and decrease the number of segments. We now have a row of polygons for a thin metal edge. 
I will repeat the process for the two center edges. Double clicking them, finding the chamfer settings, splitting the amount, and hitting OK. Now that I have rows of polygons that match where the metal rings should go, I will simply go and select a singular polygon. Holding control, I will double click its neighbor. This will select a ring of polygons. I will continue to hold control, selecting polygons and double clicking their neighbors all the way down the barrel where I want the metal rings to go. Since all the metal rings have the same width, it makes sense to do them all at once. With the faces selected, I will go and find the extrude settings in the edit polygon section of the command panel. When the dialog is open, I will ensure that we are using local normals and I will increase the amount until the metal bands have some thickness. I will hit OK to accept my changes and next we can go work on the cap. If we look at the cap, we can see that it has a little bit of a thickness, comes down at an angle, and then goes straight down to the actual cap. That means we need to create a thin row of polygons. We need to create a bevel down and then an extrusion down. So I will do that in that order. Since we extruded the metal band, we already have our thin metal band. So I can go and select both the top and bottom cap. And we can now begin by creating the bevel. In the command section, I will find the edit polygons tab. I will go and find the bevel section, and I will find the settings button just beside it. Clicking on this button will open the bevel command, and I will reduce the height to a negative number so that the bevel goes inward, and I will reduce the size of the bevel so that the bevel becomes smaller. Once I'm happy with my Decrease in size, I will hit the check mark to accept my changes, and I will go and find the extrude settings to drop the cap down. Here I need to make the number negative so that the cap goes inwards. Once done, we need to remove the end gone that exists on both the top and bottom of the barrel. An end gone is a polygon with more than four faces, and it is something we should avoid in game engines. Here, I will go and find the inset in the edit polygon section of the command panel and I will use the settings button to its right. Here the number doesn't matter but I'm going to give it some value so that I can see that it actually is creating the inset. Once that's done I will accept my changes by hitting the check mark. Now, this hasn't fixed anything. We still have an end gone. It's simply gotten smaller. So. Inside of the command panel, while still having both polygons selected, I will go and find the Collapse button. The Collapse button will reduce this polygon down to a singular vertex. Over in the Edit Geometry section, I will find the Collapse, and if I click it, the end gons are now gone, and we have but a singular vertex. There's but one more detail we need to create on this object, and that is the little wooden plug that exists in the front. To do this, I'm going to create an additional cylinder. To create additional geometry, I'm going to select in the background of my mesh so that it is no longer selected. In the command panel, I will return to the little plus. This is the creation tab. I will ensure that I am still in base geometry and standard primitives, and I will go and find the cylinder. Once enabled, I will return to my viewport and on the ground in front of the barrel, I will create a small cylinder. This cylinder doesn't need all of the height segments. We're not going to be adding metal bands to this. So in its height segments, I will remove all of the edges. It's also a little high res for what it is. And so I'm going to reduce the number of sides until it's something a little bit smaller, but still appears round. When this is done, I will convert it to an editable poly by right-clicking, 
going to the bottom of the context menu and selecting Convert to Editable Poly. I'm going to hit E on the keyboard to enter Rotate, and I will rotate this about 90 degrees. Once rotated, I can see which face is going to be pointing outwards from the barrel and which face is going to be pointing inside the barrel. The face that points into the barrel, I will use Delete on my keyboard to delete it from the mesh. This creates a hole in the geometry, but since that hole will be located inside the barrel, it's of no problem. The face on the outward side of the cylinder is yet another end gone. So, as before, I will use the Inset button, create an inset whose scale doesn't matter. I will accept that change, and then I again will go and find the Collapse button. Our cylinder is now clean and can go and be placed inside the barrel. Using W to select the Move Transform Gizmo, I will place the plug where it should be in the barrel. And now the two objects need to be connected as one. I will begin by selecting the main entity and under the Edit Poly modifier, I will ensure that I do not have any sub-selection enabled. This means that we are manipulating the barrel as a whole and not one of its sub-elements. Here, under the Edit Geometry panel, I will find the Attach button, which I will enable. While enabled, I will click on the cap. Doing so will attach it to the barrel. This has created a new element for our geometry. Lastly, we are going to go name our mesh. And finally, I don't want to leave any modifiers in my geometry. So I will right click, convert the barrel to an editable poly. And just like that, we've completed modeling our wooden barrel.